I'm starstruck how I've always wanted to be like him as a teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, direct Joey Reyes. My first love has always been teaching because as Jag made mention, even before I went into show business, I, I was a teacher. And in 2011, okay, when De La Salle University celebrated its centennial, they made the mistake of offering me a class. Okay, he says, why don't you join and give me a class, okay? Give a class for the centennial year. And I never left, okay? And I never left. And at the opportunity to go back to teaching, I just realized this is my first love. And even though I, you know, I was engrossed in media, even though I was so completely engrossed in media, um, I never left being a teacher. Because in everything you do, once you're a teacher at heart, you are not nearly a teacher by name, so I will prove later on, you have to be a teacher by life, okay? And you have to use your life, okay, as your lesson plan. So can I have the first slide, please, Lala? Okay. There we go, okay? Popify, how to make your online classes pop. But my subtitle is Teacher Get Real, okay? Teacher really, really get real. Okay, one point of clarification, okay? Um, let's start with the fact that this is not only about you as a teacher, but more important, this is about your relationship with the student using your class, okay? Um, after all, in the field of education, it's not about you. It's about the kids, okay? Uh, you don't become a teacher to be a, to be a rock star, okay? You become a teacher because you have to share okay and not only sharing you have to not only enlighten but you have to guide okay can i have next slide please pop uh, lala okay uh, and I, I i will start with i, I will start with with, 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 a, with a mind boggling premise which is gonna depress all of you but then there's no way to go but there okay the truth about 2020 who would have thought this year was gonna be this bad and it's not even september okay um, let's let's try to assess what we have gone through, okay? Since the since the lockdown in March until this very day on the on, on the twenty fourth day of, of of August, okay? Uh, let's start with the reality that twenty twenty will never be forgotten, okay? Twenty twenty is a year that all of us will never forget. And unless, you know, unless we, we, we confront the fact that this is the reality that we are in, we cannot move forward. We cannot live in denial that this is 2020 and the world is a mess, okay? I'm not even going to particularize about our country, okay? But the world is a mess in general, okay? We have been locked up in our homes for, oh my God, it's almost going to be six months, okay of quarantine and these have created major changes in us whether we like it or not i will repeat okay being locked up in your houses for six months has created major changes okay in the way we perceive life in the way we see ourselves but more so in the way we perceive the world all right come to think of it i haven't worn long pants since march of this year you know i mean it's been a world of shorts and slippers okay or sneakers right and you know this 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 has already created such such a a, a movement such an isostasy in my mindset because of the very fact that it, my human behavior has been changed in 6 months because of the demands of the moment now it's not only about you, it's also the kids. The kids too have changed. Okay. And the only way for us to move forward is to acknowledge the fact that we have to accept what 2020 has made us or what we have become as a result of 2020 and the pandemic. Next slide, Lala. You know, all throughout my talks, I've always given this mantra. Accept, adapt, and advance. Every time somebody asks me, how do you deal with all this? I said, oh, I, I, I came up with these three words, which I will use as a guide to the way we're, we're going to, to, to discuss the topic that has been assigned to me this afternoon. Accept, adapt, and advance. Now, what do I mean by this? Lala, okay, next slide. Okay, we accept the fact that the world has changed. Okay, we accept the fact that our values have changed, and we accept the fact that we, you know, everything we do 
has changed. I mean, did you ever think last year that it was going to be life-threatening to go to the grocery? Did you ever think that months would pass that you would not see your family and that human contact will become dangerous? Have you ever imagined, okay, have you ever imagined that this is going to be the situation that the punishment the universe gave us is to keep us apart? All right? We have to accept the fact that the world has changed, okay? And as a result of this, the way we think and the way we perceive the world has also changed. Next, next, next slide, Lala. All right? Now, here are some things that we have to accept before I proceed with my talk on online teaching. We have to accept the fact that, you know what? It's still going to be like this next week. It's going to be like this for quite some time. Okay? You have to accept the ultimate solution is not going to be the discovery of the vaccine. Oh, you know that, okay? We all know that, okay? Even if a vaccine is discovered, you're not just going to go out and have yourself vaccinated, not unless you want to take the risk, right? And even if they found out a foolproof vaccine, it's going to take, what, a year before it becomes accessible to everybody? We have to accept the fact that it's going to be like this, okay? And even if they, you know, even you have to accept the fact that you have to live with the virus, okay? And the only way to live with the virus is to be cautious, okay? The only way to live with the virus is for us to be cautious, okay? And we have to accept that as long as the virus is there uncontrolled, we cannot go back to the old normal. Come to think of it, as long as our healths are endangered, this is the normal and it is completely shattering okay and it is completely shattering why is it completely shattering because this is not the kind of world that we are used to and we have to accept the fact that it's not gonna go back there anymore or at least not in the immediate future okay we have to accept the fact that we, this is the situation and we have to work around it. We have to work around it. In other words, you accept that what has worked before will not work anymore for reasons of safety. All right? It is for reasons of safety. You accept that this is for the long haul and this is not merely a passing phase. Dear teachers, we're into this for the long haul. I mean, I was talking to some friends, some 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 friends who are into, in, into politics, into economics, and even into science, even into medicine. And they said, you know what, it's going to be like this maybe until, okay, until the third quarter of next year, if we are lucky. But it's still not going to be the normal that we knew of, as, as the world we knew in February of 2020 this year. Now, we also have to change slide, please. Lala. Okay. We also have to we change. Okay, and so that the manner of teaching and sharing knowledge has changed. Okay, um, this has been a long time coming. Okay, this has been a long time coming. This was bound to happen. I'm not talking about the pandemic. I'm talking about this mode of education. But the point of the matter is that we have lived in our comfort zones and, you know, why rock the boat when it was still working, right? So we built classrooms, okay? We, we built infrastructures to accommodate greater enrollment. We, 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 we had all, all, all sorts of ideas as to how we can physically bring in education to another level. We did not suspect that all it took was an invisible enemy to change the equations altogether. We also have to accept the fact that, well, for boomers like me, I, I, I've come to realize this for the longest time. You know, the kids now are, like, are not like who we were when we were their age. Even the millennials are learning about that, about the centennials. Kids nowadays, okay, kids nowadays, okay, are, are different from who we were. So we have to put that also into the equation as to how we are going to adjust ourselves into this new world. We cannot, you know what, 
we in, in this new world in this in this world of the world wide web okay uh, teachers cannot merely provide facts memorization has become extinct why because if you just want to provide facts you don't need a teacher anymore they can google it okay if they want to know something they can google it so it's not enough that you give them facts moreover we cannot be a, a walking textbook why uh, you don't relate to a textbook most specifically online i'm going to give you more solid examples of that later on and then we need technology because students are infinite to technological developments. Um, there is this whole theory called the generation theory. Okay. I'm a baby boomer, okay, which I'm revealing my age. Yeah, yes, boomer, me boomer, okay. Boomers and Gen X are digital immigrants. They're digital migrants. In other words, we had to learn it, okay. We had to learn it. We were we were born in the age when there were still no cell phones okay we were we were born in the pre-analog phase and now we reach the digital age therefore we are you know we are digital migrants millennials are digital natives yeah i know gen x build the internet gen x build the internet but it is not native to them compared to the millennials they're the digital natives okay they're the digital natives in other words um it almost comes like second nature to them, okay? For the millennials, okay, it, it became second nature to them. But the Gen X who invented it still had to learn it, okay, in order to be able to implement it. But wow, the centennials, okay, the centennials are not merely natives, they're, they're genetically digital, okay? That's how I would describe them. They are genetically digital. In other words, they are born with keyboards. Okay? Part of their umbilical cord is a keyboard. Okay? And for them, the whole mindset, the moment they're born, is digital. Okay? Next slide. Now, given all these, okay, next slide, Lala, we have to adapt. Okay? We really, really, really have to adapt. Teachers, the world will not adapt to you. You adapt to the world. Okay? You cannot demand that the classroom adapts to you, but you have to adapt to the world of your students, right? Why? Because the classroom, as I then will repeat, is for the students, it's not for the teacher. Okay? It's not for the benefit of the teacher, but it is for a working relationship, a symbiotic relationship between the teacher and the student. Now, in order to be relevant, not only to be relevant, you know, but also to be useful, you have to adapt to the changes happening to the world. Now, these changes come from the environment, the culture, and the people themselves reacting to changes, okay? You have no choice. You have no choice. You cannot insist on your ways because changes do not happen without a reason. In other words, these changes are a product of so many factors happening around the lives of students, and you have to acknowledge and learn that, okay? And you have to acknowledge and learn that. The classroom cannot just merely be a classroom now with a teacher dictating facts to the students or expecting students to merely absorb what is being given by the teacher. Yeah, some of them will. But the point is that how relevant will that education be in the long term of understanding what you are trying to impart to them? Okay. Uh, you know that for a fact too. The teachers that you most remember are not the teachers who were terrors, and if ever you remember them, you remember them for the wrong reasons. The teachers, the ones that you remember, are the ones who were human beings in the classroom and who treated their classrooms as life and their students as human beings. Okay? I'll elaborate on that later on. Okay? Next slide, please, Lala. Okay? Now, you, 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 I mean, this is a matter of survival, guys. This is a matter of survival. Education demands that you are updated with what the world is. Okay? Resist that and you are going to follow the path of the dinosaurs. Okay? Without the aid of a comet smashing into the earth. Okay? You, you, you can't stop it. Okay? Especially if you're in basic education, you cannot be in that ivory tower of knowledge. The teacher today cannot be isolated. He must be immersed in the world of his students 
for you to understand them. Okay? And for them to understand you. Adaptation is connectivity. Uh, let me elaborate on that further. Nurse <clears throat> into the world, and I, and I, and I, and I sometimes ask. Uh, I sometimes ask some of my some of my colleagues. Okay, just how how familiar are you with the world of your students, or you know, are are, are you into back? You know, are in are you in the world of, of back into the future, and which you, you're just okay in your own mindset of the age when you are happiest and you're during your happy times it, it cannot be like that okay you you have to understand them you have to understand the culture that they're moving to you have to understand the world from the eyes of your kids i call them your kids because you know what when i got back into teaching one thing i really 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 learned that you know my my my, my, my stint as a teacher is that 70%, yeah, no, 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 maybe 60% I provide my field of specialization, but 40% is being a parent to these kids, okay? Being a guardian to these kids, a guardian not only of knowledge, but a guardian of their survival tactics of dealing with the world. And the only way you can understand that is not by imposing an ivory tower attitude, but to have compassion, and empathy for your students. And the only way you can do that by, is by understanding your world. Now, um, in order to survive, we cannot be afraid of change or changes. As a matter of fact, it's so badly needed. Change and changes are so badly needed. Empathy is greatly needed by the teacher. By, by being empathetic, you are actually enhancing your class and bringing your class to a different level rather than just a repository of knowledge. You become a vessel for life. All right, next slide. Now, with online teaching, there's so many of us, oh God, who are so scared of technology. I am, okay, I'm not a techie, okay? I am not a techie at all. But I said, I, I, I cannot resist Okay, the, I, I cannot resist the demands of technology because technology is so much a part of the world today and by withholding and by, by being uh, determinedly technologically naive, I am not only castrating myself from being able to relate to the world, but more so unable to relate to my students. You know, life, but life is not only for techies. You know, uh, you know what? Okay, we, we are overruled by the fear of technology. Okay, that so, some some of us say, you know, I'm too old to learn that. You know, all I, and I, I came alive. I, I came up with a line. Okay, to answer that, all dogs can be taught new tricks. Okay, yes, all dogs can still be taught new tricks as long as the old dog is willing to learn. Okay, or all dogs can create the tricks more relevant for his purpose. All right. You cannot use you cannot use your age, you cannot use what you imagine as your limitations to deprive yourself of the instruments that are necessary to relate to the world. Now, you do not be afraid of technology. Technology is there for us to use, and this is the only way for us now to reach out to our kids in the present situation. Okay? Moving on. Okay? Now, next slide, please. You have to embrace the change. Okay, you have to embrace the change. Um, you shouldn't be afraid. You should be challenged. Uh, realize that the scenario is different because the kids you are teaching are not the same kids as they were before. And how do you embrace the change? Yeah, you're right there, June Eliozo of De La Salle Sobel. Okay, you have to have the willingness to learn. And you know why? It's not only the kids that you're teaching. Your kids are teaching you as well. Okay? That's the beauty of where we are right now. That's the beauty of being a teacher. That's why it is better than Botox. Teaching is an endless symbiotic process because you learn from your students as much as your students learn from you. Learning is no longer a mere set of, of enumeration. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's integral to the life of both teacher and student. Okay, I, 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 I'll, I'll give you an example of that, okay? I'll give you an example by making myself relevant to my kids. And this is what Broden was mentioning earlier, okay? Um, yeah, one of, the, one of the greatest side effects, okay? One of the greatest side effects of, of, of this quarantine is, I, is, is my addiction for Korean novellas. 
there was a time that I really didn't have the time to watch them. Okay. Until uh, one of my co-teachers, Madonna Taray, said, oh, you should watch, you know, uh, Rush Landing on You. Okay. I said, it's really nice. So I said, one time I opened up my Netflix and before you know, I knew it, I was addicted to it. Okay. I, I watched it. Um, then, oh yeah, brother, I'm going to discuss uh, it's okay to be okay in a, in a bit. Okay. Because that's what I just recently finished. Okay. So, before I knew it, I was, I was watching all these Korean novellas, but there was a time in, in, in De La Salle University, I was unable to, to, to link up, okay, with my students who were so into K-pop and into, uh, in, into, in, into Korean novellas, hindi ba? But then all of a sudden, when I, went out into, I, I began to understand why, uh, why there is a Filipino addiction to this kind of entertainment. Because when you really, really study these Korean novellas, I am not looking down at Filipino. Yeah, I, I, I know Sky Castle, Abby. Okay, don't get me started. I'm getting confused. Okay, I'm getting all defocused with all these Korean novellas. And dami, dami, dami matututunan. And dami, dami matutunan. And I use that as a point of discussion in class for values which were shown by Koreans but were very Asian and relate to Filipinos as well. Okay, don't laugh at me. Okay. We even discuss Taylor Swift's songs, okay? Because this is the way, you know, in a casual manner, this is the way I, I discuss attitudes which are immortalized in pop culture and how they are related to kids and what these can be used as a guide to kids learning from life, okay? So you embrace the change. You embrace the change. Later on, I am going to, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to relay this, okay, to the idea of, yeah, of unlearning by relearning. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, you have to know your medium. Okay. You have to know your medium. It's very important to know that online teaching is not bringing, you know, face-to-face, face-to-face <laughs> methodology to the classroom. I, I'll share something with you, which is my mistake, my most grievous fault, okay? When I started out sometime around uh, around July, when this opened, no, 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 it was about early August, yeah. Um, my first online class in De La Salle, okay? It, it, was, it, it was a class in conceptualization, okay? Conceptualization in media. It's for mass, it's for com arts majors. Jesus, I, I had a PowerPoint but I was lecturing for an hour and a half to two hours using my PowerPoint the way I would use it in a face-to-face -face class. At the end of two hours and 15 minutes, I realized three things. Number one, I was so ineffective because you cannot lecture to a monitor. Okay? You cannot lecture to a monitor. You know, that's uh, no, yeah, no. Synchronous is when you meet them in in, in this setup, okay, in, in a Zoom meeting, okay. Uh, I was ineffective because you do not get the reactions of kids, okay, while you're lecturing and there is a PowerPoint right in front of you. Okay. Secondly, the kids were resistant, okay. The kids were resistant. That's why you have to be very very careful in experimenting and innovating and varying your approaches especially when you have podcasts and voice over powerpoints and the likes because remember these kids are trained with attention spans from a to a prime okay they are not like us they are digitally conditioned okay their degree of concentration is very short and when you don't offer them something interesting you know you're going to be switched off in the remote control of their mind and then thirdly, teachers, you are going to be so exhausted because this is more exhausting than a face-to-face -face situation. Extremely exhausted in a face-to-face -face situation. So what did I do? Okay, that's when, you know, that's when the challenge came in. And I realized that even, and especially on an online setting, okay, the very nature of the internet is interaction, not simplistic delivery, okay? You have to innovate the way that you teach so that you interact with students. You make your students realize and discover rather than for you to feed facts. 
online education is about responding to one another and not in a conventional manner. You have to think of ways to make them active, okay? To make them active without you watching over them or without your presence even on screen. Now, next slide, okay? Next slide, Lala. Okay, this means together with your, you know, sabay naman tayo eh. Sabay naman tayo eh, no? In the same manner that your kids are adjusting to online, uh, online uh, teaching, on online education, we are also adjusting to online teaching. Um, let's be brutally frank. Okay, let's be brutally frank. The fact is, man, we are all caught off guard. Okay, with this pandemic. Let's be frank. We are not prepared. Okay, but we must do what we must do. Hindi naman tayo handa din to eh. Hindi naman, hindi, hindi naman ibig sabihin na magkaroon ka ng apat na sessions na on online teaching na makakapagturo ka na online with greatest proficiency. Hello, di ba? It's like going to an acting workshop that after four acting workshops, you know, that you can already you know, act yourself to an Academy Award. Okay? Yes, you must also be forgiving. And you know what, Jasper? Okay, I'm reading your comment, Jasper Alon Taga. Okay? We have to be forgiving. We have to. We have the privilege of making mistakes. Okay, we have the privilege of lazy making mistakes, and it's from these mistakes that we learn. My biggest learning came from my biggest mistake. Okay, my mistake of trying to bring my face-to-face -face teaching methodology online. That was such a big letdown that I had to really look into myself and look into my resources and finding a way of teaching it effectively. We have to be forgiving, but we have to acknowledge the fact that we make mistakes and we have to move on from our mistakes. We cannot be forgiving and use that as an excuse. Okay? We can only be forgiving as long as we make it a point to move forward and not merely say, well, it's like this. No, we have to move on. Okay? So the only thing we can do right now is not merely make the most out of it, but my God, make it our own. This is the challenge. And this is what I love about what's happened. It challenges me to think of better ways to teach. Okay? It challenges me to perform better in class, perform better in the sense that I trigger their imagination and their knowledge. Okay? The best methodology is that which brings out the best in you, not merely as a teacher, but also as a human being to your students. Okay? This, they say that uh, online teaching is so impersonal, but you know what? I found out it's not. It actually encourages more one-to-one -one response okay more one-to-one -one response with one another okay um i'll explain that later maybe and i can explain that later in greater detail during the q a now be willing to make mistakes be willing to experiment to change and appreciate your mistakes more important make the world you share with your learners as your textbook okay it's not just about what you teach it's about how you teach it and how you make that teaching methodology part of a world shared by both you and your students. Next slide, please, Lana. The first thing to realize is that uh, the first thing to realize is you have to expand your lesson plans beyond the textbook, okay, or the module or whatever it is that you want to keep as a structure. Guys, the old ways won't work anymore. The old ways don't work anymore know the internet and know how to maximize the use of the internet more important is use what is accessible to both your world and that of your students to validate your lessons uh, let me share how i do it no that tells you one way that i do it i have a class okay as i said in conceptualization it's a three-hour class but i only meet them for an hour and 15 minutes and that is to discuss um the assignment that has been given to them the week before we, we, we have a, this, you know, we have a, a synchronous discussion, okay? But the rest of the class, which is supposed to cover, okay, the three hours is for them to do an exercise, which I throw to them, okay? Whether as individuals or as a group. And it's, a and it's, it's an exercise which will demand them to work, to work on their own, okay? In other words, synchronous sessions are meant to be Q&A, clarification, and even heated discussions. Um, there, are other, there are other ways of creating discussions, even though it is not in a synchronous session, okay? We have a discussion board, okay? In, uh, in DLSU, we use the Canvas, okay, as our platform. So there, there, there's a discussion board, okay? And there, kids 
post ideas, I throw in controversial questions, they react to that, they argue, and you could see the level of activity that's happening. And guess what? That's even more than what I get from face-to-face -face classes. And one thing I realized too is the moment I let them free for half the class to, 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 to be guided on their own, Jesus, the papers they're delivering are better than the papers that they deliver on face-to-face -face situations. Okay, I, I, I can vouch for that. Mas maganda yung mga papel nila kapag hinayaan nyo sila to discover, okay, to discover on their own rather than for you to spoon feed them and have certain expectations. Now that the expectations are right, they're gonna shock you with what they're gonna deliver because these kids are not dumb, okay? They're not dumb. Yeah, all right? I, I, I do realize that really there is collaboration indeed. They don't do it only alone. They do it sometimes in teams. Okay, they do it sometimes in teams. Yung isang klasiko naman sa DLS, of course, this is a major course. It's on, it's, on, it's on feature films, okay? It's on feature films. You know, just open them. Well, there are a lot of my kids have access to Netflix, okay? Just ask them to watch all these Netflix movies and then you discuss them based on a certain, on, on a certain guided template. You know, I couldn't get that on a on a face to face class when I have to show the film in my class and then have them discuss it for fifteen minutes after. Now that they watch it at home, when we sit down and discuss and when they give papers, you see, you know, the, the ideas flying all over the place, and that for me is wonderful sense of discovery and what I call eureka learning. I'll I'll, I'll explain that in a bit. Okay, next slide. Okay, next slide, Lala. Okay. Um, here, my, here is my, my new mantra in class with online teaching, okay? You do not lecture, you engage. You do not merely teach, you motivate. You do not spoon feed, you challenge to discover. The lesson is built around the learning expectation, but then don't give limits to that. Okay? Let the kids surprise you with what they can deliver. You engage your students by showing them that this is not an isolated space where you learn something in particular. Rather, okay, relate this to what is part of their everyday lives. Do not be ashamed to show them that you, you know, don't be ashamed to show them that you live in the same world that they do. Okay? Don't be ashamed to, as a matter of fact, celebrate it. Celebrate it. Celebrate the fact that the teacher is also part of the student's world and that you are interested in their world not only because you have to, but because you want to. It is only that such kind of engagement can really create a very fertile ground for teaching. More important, know and understand their word as well. Um, oh, Broden would know this. In, in, in CSB where, you know, I had the, I had the chance to be, to be the chair, um, I, I realized that a great amount of my, of my sharing, of my wisdom, okay, of my... 65 years of wisdom, okay, is not only in class, okay, but in moments in which you are with your kids and you're sharing with them real world experiences, okay. I am a practitioner teaching, teaching future filmmakers how it is in the real world and how to deal with it. And I tell you, I learn from them because they give me back my sense of ideology, my given sense, my sense of idealism rather, in the same manner that I give them a sense of roots. I give them a sense of having their feet on the ground. And it is this symbiotic relationship, which is true learning, which is beyond the classroom, all right? Now, what is important is you challenge your students, you motivate them, you push them beyond expected rules, but be open-minded, okay? Experiment with approaches in teaching a lesson. Yeah, I repeat again, there's nothing wrong with making mistakes, okay? Some of your attempts will fall flat, but so what, okay? What, you know, what is important is you keep on changing this whole model of teaching in your mind. And these have to be related to the lives of their students. Uh, in my class in La Salle, I had, I, had this, I had this really, really wonderful, I had wonderful experience when... We were when when the when the kids were talking about the, the 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 poetry of Taylor Swift. I said, huh, okay. And then they were talking about you know the the, the recurring themes in the in the songs of Taylor Swift. Or, and I said, you know, I, I I can talk about the recurring themes in the songs of 
Carol King, which is the music of my age, okay? And then I realized oh, there's no difference. There is no difference. We're dealing with, with, the same, with, with, with the same mindset, but only of different generations. Then, yeah, going back to Kay Novella, uh, um, I mean, just, just, just last week, I was talking to my cousin, we really went off topic. This is my conceptualization class for, uh, for sophomore students in, in the LSU. And we were talking about it's okay not to be okay. I'm sure a lot of you are watching or some of you have watched the series or watching the series. It's one of the best, best, um, one of the best uh, Korean telenovelas because of the values that it imparts. I bro then, you have to finish it. You know, you know, when I finished it, I was literally bawling and I was bawling because of the values that it was, uh, it was embodying. And I wouldn't be surprised why Filipinos are buying it like crazy. It is Korean yet universal and it is beautiful in its universality and it can be a subject of discussion. So I'm not surprised that, you know, UP is offering an elective course on Korean novellas. Okay, so here you're bringing what is in the real world into the classroom and showing to the class that God, okay, you 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 can you 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 can put this one to another. Yes, Stella, it's it's a beautiful, you know, from the point of view of a filmmaker, the the the, the, the technique used, Jesus, it blows your mind, and you, you know, Stella, um, you, you know, Stella, uh, what is also so so significant about it that they finished that that telenovela, that Korean novella, already when there was a pandemic. You imagine yeah. that they finished it in July, so it was on. You know, they were shooting at the time when every everybody else is in a lockdown. Okay, and yeah, bro, then it's treatment of mental health. The sensitivity of teaching the mental health issue is inspiring. Okay, so how can you not bring, you know, uh, something like that which is so available in the real world? To the classroom in order to, to to share with your students how something so real can actually be something so inspiring and something so enriching okay now you have to find ways of making the lessons re relatable so that they may be motivated okay to think on their own that's that's the whole thing about good teaching you don't teach them to be parrots to be repeating information you teach them to think and to discover Okay, and that can only be done if the teacher is open-minded to accept the fact that the best methodology for every class is no distinct templated methodology. Okay, the template is life itself and the teacher's willingness to embrace life. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, it's all about self-discovery. Okay, online teaching is interactive. We learn from the students as much as they learn from us. And especially now, Tayo, that we are caught in this in this bridge, diba? Caught, caught in this bridge of transition from face to face into online teaching. Na hindi tayo talaga handa, hindi ba? Ang gandang pagkakataon ito for us to discover ourselves as well. Okay? Ang gandang pagkakataon ito for us to discover ourselves as well. And what is our role as teachers, not only with our methodology, but what we represent to our kids. All right, moving on, next slide. This way, online classes become one which involves discussions and elaborations, and therefore what we do is we, uh, we, we don't merely endure, but rather we advance, okay? We do not merely endure, we advance. We, we, we don't say we make do, but rather we, we innovate. We can't help, you know, that we, we keep on using the old methods, only as basis of effective teaching, but we must adapt and bring them to another level. You know what, guys? Teachers, you have to trust your kids and their ability to move forward with our guidance, but not our insistence. I will repeat. We have to trust our kids that they're smart. They are. They are. They're smart enough to move on their own with our guidance, but not our insistence of what they have to do. All right? Moving on. And this can only this can only be this can only be achieved if we enjoy this process. Okay, I know it's hard. I know it's hard for guys. You know what? I mean, later on I'm going to explain. You know, in another in another place, it's it's hard. But the only way for us to really really love this moment is to enjoy this experience. We have to be yeah positive. Think about this positively. 
think think of uh, our jobs as something positive and that's the only thing that will remain positive in the age of the pandemic okay more important don't make this a job be the experience okay you share the experience kids will love you for it no not love you for it kids will remember you for it because you were not merely a teacher you were an experience okay at the time of great pag-aalangan and uncertainty, kids need an anchor. And this anchor of strength can be the teacher, not necessarily by choice of methodology or subject matter, but by being there, understanding every step along the way as much as we can. Okay? Next slide. Okay? To advance, you have to innovate, discover, and explore. And I call that Eureka Learning. What is Eureka Learning? It is using everyday culture and experiences to point out what is being taught. Even popular culture can be relevant, identifiable, and everyday experiences uh, can be turned into something higher. Eureka Learning is very simple. It's some, not something which you, some, it's not merely something that you, you, you point out to a student, you let him discover it and have his own Eureka moment. Okay? Yeah, you're right. Technology can be your friend and technology is one great instrument for your critical learning. Yeah, too. Pedagogy is important, but the pedagogy is the teacher. It is not merely said, it's lived and exemplified by the kind of mindset that the teacher shows his students. Pedagogy can be such an overused term. It's an abuse term. Okay, It's an abuse term and sometimes it can be a pretentious term. Okay. I would say that the best pedagogy is the exemplification of life with the attitude that the teacher shows his students. Okay, next slide. Let the student, next slide, Leon. Okay, what are the principles of Eureka Learning? I, I, I have it right here. You go beyond knowing facts, but applying and understanding them in real life. Okay, regardless of what you teach. Regardless of what you teach, whether it is basic arithmetic all the way down to history, especially basic history for teachers on K to 12. Boy, do we learn that. The kasaysaya. Okay? You allow your students to use their daily experience to validate your lessons. Okay? You're not teaching but guiding. Not explaining but letting them discover. Okay? Be so, be relevant. Be relevant. Okay? The biggest mistake any teacher can have is to be irrelevant. Okay? To his students. Because... Sure, they're going to give you the passing grade, but most unfortunately, okay, most unfortunately, the passing grade will be completely forgotten a term or two later. Okay, next slide. Okay. Oh, this is a, a sweet slide, okay. Uh, don't just be the teacher, be the lesson. Education is primarily for the needs of the students and not the expectations of the teacher. All right? Uh, since we're all into this together, okay, next slide, please. Okay, since we're all into this together, you have to innovate, you have to improvise, and you have to think out of the box. You're allowed. You're allowed to think out of the box. Make learning experiential, make learning as attached to real life as possible. The teacher is there to be not only the moral compass, okay? The teacher is there to be the axis from which guidance is implemented. But it is not based on insistence, but it's based on the discovery of truth, okay? Your greatest enemy is yourself and that you fear that you're not going to be effective online. Worse is your presumption that regardless of platform, your methodology of choice is not going to be, you know, guarantee deficient, but that's not necessarily true. Okay, moving on. Okay, I'm on my last two slides. Is it harder work for all of you? Yeah. <laughs> you bet it is. Yep, yep. You bet it is a lot of hard work. You know what? It's going to be about two to three times more than the usual work that you're doing. <laughs> you bet it is. 
you, in my case, you get emails left and right of kids asking questions and you do it on a one-to-one -one basis. But that works. It's very personal. Diba? Yung hindi ginagawa yan sa face-to-face, nagagawa nila online. Diba? Uh, the preparation is grabe. Okay? Uh, I would video myself until <laughs> one in the morning, <laughs> upload it. Okay. I would do PowerPoints and do voiceovers and upload it. After uploading it, okay, you 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 get the responses and so that. So in other words, it's not merely having a lesson plan. You're actually creating a production every time you go both synchronous and asynchronous. It's a lot of hard work. Okay, but that it is that 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 is how it is you enjoy it you really really enjoy it like i never imagined myself to buying all you know i i it's a running joke jag knows this it's a running joke among faculty members that you buy all these ring lights from lazada so you look good when you video yourself and you upload it for your for your online classes but that's part of it that's part of the change now moving on let me summarize so i can go to the q a okay you have to accept the situation. Now deal with it. You can't do anything about it. Okay? There is a new normal and we have no choice. Our option is to make the new normal the better normal. Okay? We make it the better normal. Hey, look, man. Okay? All of a sudden, you know, all it took was being locked up. I mean, human beings being locked up in their homes, okay, for a few months and suddenly the air is clear. Suddenly the air is clear. Suddenly the world has been cleansed. Apparently, the virus is the catalyst, the virus rather was the enzyme, okay, to make men realize that we are the real threats to this planet, okay. We adapt, we adjust to the world, the world will not adjust to us, and we need to accept the change and make the most out of it. We have to make the most out of it. Most important, now this is a La Salle line, we need to be the change. We teachers need to be the change so that we can inspire our students to even generate virally more change. Next slide. Finally, don't just make do, improve and improvise and innovate. Be creative. Unlearn, then relearn. The rules are different now. And the rules can be defined any which way you want it. Most important, don't be miserable. I've stopped being miserable. I've stopped counting the days of the quarantine. I've stopped taking the alphabet of the MECQ, ECQ, GCQ, and whatever CQ they can come up with seriously. I'm going to take each day and make each day a source for a challenge. Only those, okay, who refuse change are left out of the process of evolution. And if you are there embracing the change, believe me, you are in the breast profession. You know why? Final slide. The best part of, a be of being a teacher is that we never cease from learning. Do you know that we are going to be immortal if you're a good teacher? As long as the knowledge that you impart, the inspiration you give your students are left in their hearts and minds, you will never be forgotten because they are going to pass it on even to their children and to the generations to come. Right now, when I came back teaching, I realized that I am now teaching the children of my first students. I am a grandfather teacher. And when I hear words and comments from the parents of my, of my students now, uh, I realized that uh, the best part of my present human existence is not my work in films. It's not all the scripts I've written. It's the fact that I am a teacher and we should all be so proud that we have chosen to be in the best profession in the world. So let this just be a challenge and let's do what we are set out to do. Why we are given this life and breath. We're here to teach and to share. So let's keep on teaching. Okay. All right. All. Wow. Uh a process. Take a, take a. Breathe. <laughs> Stop. Stop, Jack. Not that I feel like Yoda. <laughs>
hello naman first three minutes grabe na OA na yung quotable quotes it's it's been quotable quotes for 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 the whole talk amazing that was an amazing 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 thank you so much Jack thank you Jose um, thank you okay so we're gonna be opening up the floor for questions and as a bonus if you have an interesting question on the that you put on the chat okay put your questions on the chat if you have an interesting question on the chat we're going to ask you to say it in person o di ba makakausap niyo si direct Joey so make the questions count uh, also um so I'm going to start off with that. I'm going to kick things off kasi wala pa naman naglalagay sa chat. Nagre-react pa lang mga tao. Oh, okay, kayong mahiya. Uh, uh, Mag-add pong tanong kayo. Huwag lang showbiz question, okay? Huwag uh. lang showbiz question. <laughs> well, I'll, I'm going to I'm going to ask direct about ano. I'm going to start off about kasi nga, yeah, we're talking about making the class, making the making the topics or connecting the topics to popular to popular culture, to what the students are experiencing. And um how does that how do, where do we find that? I mean, it's it's easy to say, go watch K-pop or go go watch uh, go go pick up something from Provinciano or something. But where, what should the teachers be looking for? Do they just literally switch on the same television shows the kids are watching? No, 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 no. I think it has to be very organic because you you you, you cannot be anyway. You can you 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 cannot pretend to be doing something, eh, hindi ba? You cannot. They they know it. They know it if you're putting up a show. Okay, they know it. Yung nagpapaka nagpapaka hip ka okay <laughs> nagpapaka cool <laughs> oh nagpapaka cool ka no and you, you know you'd look like a you know you'd, you'd look ridiculous and I'd look like a dirty fool diba if i do that it has to be organic so that's why nga the teacher you know it has to be your life it has to be your life as well well sino ba naman ang hindi nanonood ng K-pop nanonood ng Korean novela now right ah uh, they, they, these kids want to learn a little bit more than the lessons themselves. They want to relate it to, to, to life. So, you know, it has to come out or, or, or organically. It has to come out organic. In, in my class, I don't say, yeah, okay, I'm going to discuss Provinciano now. No, you know, in the middle of the class, okay, I suddenly stop and say, you know what, did you see or Provinciano last night? Blah, 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 blah. And then I get the reaction. Then I slowly bring it back to the lesson. Okay, then I slowly bring it back to the lesson. Um, example, okay, we were discussing, uh, we, uh, we, we were discussing uh, movies, okay, in, 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 our, in our feature film, uh, no, we were discussing movies. I mean, you, you know what I did, uh, Jack? I, I made them compare uh, Marriage Story, okay. Okay, the, the recent uh, Marriage Story, with Kramer versus Kramer. Mm. Okay, it, it dealt with the same subject matter and I said, okay, yes. let's discuss why it's different and how the issues were treated differently. Grabe ang discussion about the about the 30 year difference of how how relationships were perceived in the 1980s and how relationships were perceived in 2019. So, you know, even I was surprised by the way kids were showing such wisdom, okay, in the way their parents think and the way they think. Okay, and that for me, that open discussion is 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 important. You know, it's more important than the structure of the screenplay. <laughs> it's more important than the film direction. Okay, it's 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 opening their minds. Okay, to life with the movies that they see or I ask them to see. All right. So in other words, it has to be organically put in. Or another example. Okay. I was I was asking them why is it about what what is it about uh, about K-pop which which you you really like do you understand okay the songs okay that you see most of them don't understand the lyrics of the songs okay of all, the, all these Korean songs but what is it about them it's the persona of, of these K-pop groups okay of what they re represent in terms of youth culture and oh really like why okay so in other words. Uh, ang ganda, ang ganda to find out their insight, and you learn from them as much as uh, as much as uh, ja, they wouldn't relate to us when we talk about the Beatles and Carol King, right? I mean, true, true. Or, or true. Si Carol King, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same thing. You have to you have to get into their groove, and by getting into their groove, you're using the classroom as a platform for for greater and deeper learning. Okay, all right. Okay. Direct, there's a very interesting one here. I'm going to ask uh, Cyril Mapula to to come from Dumaguete. Oh. To, to come up on, to, to, to unmute. Uh, very interesting ang kanyang question. Um, Hi, Cyril. Mistakes. I've always wanted to go to Dumaguete. I haven't gone there, but I heard it's beautiful. Oh, God, I love Dumaguete. Dumaguete yeah, is okay. such a wonderful place. All right. Cyril, what's your question, Iha? Yes. Um, hello, Direct. Um, good afternoon to you. Um, I was really, I was really interested um, in your discussion, and there's one thing that popped out 
popified um, during our presentation when you mentioned about mistakes yeah. and learning experiences. So the question is, how do we convert these mistakes um, into lessons maybe? Or how do we popify this? Because um, as a teacher, we always have a hard time converting lessons and both students and teachers do have a hard time delivering um, yeah. what's expected. So how do we put it into context? Because I think this is one great takeaway from me um, dito, sa, uh, dito sa presentation mo. How are we going to highlight the experience um, uh, of online learning? Okay, for me, okay, for me. How do I, how, why do I say that, you know, that, that mistakes are, are, are important? They are important because it makes you realize and it jolts you. You know what, Cyril? The first online classes, it really jolted me into a reality that I'm doing this all wrong. Okay? But what is important is I recognize that it's a mistake. Okay? And I learn from that mistake to find out ways of correcting it. Okay? It challenges you. What is the greater error is if you insist okay, that you are still right and you don't acknowledge it to be a mistake. Because it's not going to be you who's going to suffer. It's going to be the kids. Now, how do you, how do you, how do you correct it? Ah, that's where the challenge comes in. That's where the excitement comes in. What do I do to make it exciting? What, how, what are the devices that I can use to be able to relate this to the kids and to make the kids realize, you know, uh, uh, that 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 something can come out of 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 my online classes. Um, it's as simple as that, which is not so simple at all. It's a challenge for the it's a challenge for the teacher. But ang uulitin ko mas importante is that yeah, yeah a, a, a acceptance acceptance is the fact that you have to accept the fact that you know you're not ready for it. But then I'm gonna work on it. Okay, Cyril, it's gonna take some time before. And I don't think we can ever perfect online teaching. We can never perfect it. Okay, uh, unang una. One of my biggest problems is the internet. Hindi ba? At dahil ito, a big discussion, hindi ba, in class. Biglang mamawala ang mga estudyante. Isa-isa nagda-drop out dahil sa weak internet connection. Hindi ba? And then, how do you go about it? You have to record your lectures. You have to, you know, have to upload your lectures. It's, it's, it's a tedious task. But we learn. We learn. And you know what, Cyril? Pretty soon, okay. Teacher, Mr. Mapula, pretty soon it's going to be set to teacher to us. Okay. Thank you, Derek. Okay. Okay. And good luck. Good luck, Cyril. There's a, there's a really nice one here, Derek. No? How can we empathize online? And then, I guess, pwede na rin natin tie up dito yung pan, uh, this is one from Ms. Uh, Graciano, uh, from Mr. Graciano Labio. Paano naman, how do we, how do we entice or how do we bring in, kasi mahirap yung entice eh, kasi ito na nga yung normal. You know, we will have to go into media-based education sooner if not later. So, uh, paano natin magagamit, di ba? Tagalog kasi yung tanong niya. Mahihikayat ang, da, ang mga estudyante na pumasok uh, or to buy in. And I think that has a lot to do with empathy. Um, and how do we, so how do we empathize online? You know what, it's, it's you know what, Jag, um, what is the name of the person who asked this question? Well, si Empathize, si Joseph Conrad Hilario. And then si Graciano Labio ang nagtanong about enticing students to come in or to adopt the online learning platform. All right. Okay. Umpisahan ko dun sa Empathize. Who told you that you can't empathize online? Yes, you can. Okay. If you open your eyes and ears. Okay. Um, if you open your eyes and ears and you really have your, your, your mind nakaset sa mga estudyante. Mahirap, mahirap dahil nga now people are in little boxes, right? Pero just ko, face to face, nakaka-empathize ka rin kung talagang pusong bato ka, hindi ba? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing, hindi ba? It's the same thing. Uh, you, you, you can, at saka alam mo maganda na, you, you know, I, why there is greater degree of empathy is there are greater opportunities for one-on-one -on -one communication. There is greater, um, you chat, okay? Pati Facebook, ginagamit ko na eh. Okay? Yung Facebook Messenger, ginagamit ko na. Okay? Yung, uh, yung chat room, okay, sa, sa Canvas, ginagamit ko na. Okay? Uh, pati, you know, every available ano, email, ginagamit ko na. And sometimes, ay, te terrible, sometimes, with, with great amount of empathy, alas 12 ng hating gabi, may email ka, nagtatanong. Okay? And since awake ka pa rin naman, sinasagot mo. Okay? Uh, in other words, there is great room. I got to know my students more, okay, because of empathy. I'll give an example, okay. 
in my class now in DLSU, I have a, I have a sophomore student who is not very proficient in English nor in Filipino because he's a foreigner. He's, a, he's from Taiwan, okay? And he's always been scared. He's always been scared because he will be misjudged because he cannot speak English well, nor can he understand Filipino. But when we started emailing to each other and then I was reacting to his, to his submissions on a one-to-one -one basis, you could see the confidence in his work because you know that he knows that you're there for him, okay? Which cannot possibly happen on a face-to-face -face class situation. He would never open up to me on a class situation such as that. But since there is the privacy, okay? Since there is a privacy, ako meron na dito si Christine nagsasuggest na ng K-drama. When there is this privacy between the two of you, you can, you, you can understand them better. Now, how do you entice them? Ah, that's your challenge. There is no surefire formula for that. Okay, there's no surefire formula for that. You don't, you don't, ent you don't entice them by fear. Okay, you don't entice them. For, but then, how can you make them go online? Well, that's the only way it is right now. Okay, since the only it's the only way there is right now. See, so you know, it's not that they have no option, but you have to make that option worth their while and worth their interest and worth their attention. Okay? Direct, okay. there's an interesting one here. Um, now about you know, yes, we're about relating, uh, relating and connecting not just the students to the lessons, but the lessons to life and all of these things, diba? Right? But there's an interesting one here. How do you set boundaries? How do you still maintain the student teacher relationship? Ah, there is. I mean, it's respect. Okay, it's mutual respect. You know, you 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 know naman the line. Eh. You know naman the line. Uh, uh, you know when 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 to stop. Okay, when when to stop. You know, you have to you have to still be the elder. Okay, but the elder is not necessarily the authoritarian figure. Uh -uh. It it's the parent. It's most important the friend. Guys, teachers, do you know how much these kids are just so dysfunctional at times that they need friends they can look up to? Uh, kids who are with OFW parents, diba? Uh, you become a surrogate parent. But more important, you become a friend. Okay, I think that's the way. And as a friend, you know, an older friend, that's a, you're the uncle. Okay. In my case, I'm the Lolo. Okay, there is still that boundary of respect. Okay, I'm the youthful Lolo. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, ano pa ba? Wow, ang dami mga tanong eh. Uh, wait, there's an interesting one here. Kaso uh, chat ko si Miss Lori. Uh, okay. Si Mon Carlo Real. Sige, mas Mon Carlo Real, can you unmute? Uh, it's Mon Carlo. Ano tanong nito? You ask your question. Sige. So, surprise, surprise. Oh, there you are. Unmute, Iho. I can't hear you. Unmute. Hello, Dira. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, teachers. I am from um, La Salle Academy in Iligan City. So. Oh, how are you guys there? Are you okay? I, so far, not so good. Because <laughs> medyo dumadami na yung cases dito sa Iligan City. So, <laughs> ingat, 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 ingat. And yes. <laughs> and then, uh, I just want to get an idea po, uh, especially as a math teacher. So, in this new normal, how can I really use the idea of Papify to integrate value or values to my lessons? Okay. Anong level ng math ang tinuturo mo? I'm teaching grade 11 po. Okay. All right. Nako. Okay. You have three problems. Okay. Number one is you're teaching math. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Number two, you are uh, teaching kids of that really crazy age, okay? And then number three, you have to use online, okay? okay? All right. Now, let's look at these three problems and let's look at them as positive challenges, okay? Number one, okay? Number one, you're teaching math. Math is such a rigid and precise science, right? Yes. Okay? But it cannot be effective if it is you, you know, if you have an authoritarian look at it, hindi ba? You have, to, you have to make them enjoy it. 
Kaya-kaya naman. Sa itsura mo naman to make lessons enjoyable, hindi ba? Hindi ka naman yung, yung stereotypical math teacher na hindi ba nakasalamin at may dalang padel, hindi ba? Na, nang, nangahambalos ng estudyante na, na mali ang mga sagot, hindi ba? And, ng, ano eraser. <laughs> o, huwag naman yung eraser, okay? Pero yun ang bahagi yun eh. That you, you, that you show them that making a mistake is not a mortal sin but part of being human. Okay? Oh. Nice. Ikalawa, okay, ikalawa, that's a critical age. That's an age of so much attention. So you have to get their trust, okay? You have to win their trust that you're there for them and that you're there for math. You get what I mean? Okay, you're there for them, but you're not there for math, okay? And then lastly, online. How's, how's your internet connection there? It's <laughs> okay so far. Kasi kanina, mga 12 to 2, tapos wala namang problema sa internet. Okay, so you know, you know, man, ang, ang suggest, okay, if there's no problem, then then you can even use the internet for, you know, just open yourself to even personal personal teaching on one on one. Kapag meron na hihirapan. Okay. Siguro na hihirapan kasi, bro, ay, direct na, bro. <laughs> I'm not exactly true. Kasi direct is, uh, in the science community, we are really required to integrate lesson to, ay, to integrate values in our lesson, especially. Uh, just like before, we have a monthly values. For, uh, we are following a certain set of values in uh, our school. So maybe that's one of my problems. Teka muna, teka muna. Mon, mon, mon. Kasi, nilalagay mo yan eh. Values, ikaw, yung subject. Yes, ma'am. Nakakompartmentalize eh. Values that I have to integrate with the subject and which I have to implement. So you put it in three separate sections. Don't look at it that way. Actually, isa lang yun. Because you are the value. Yes. Okay? You have to become the value. I mean, that sounds so idealistic. It, that, that sounds like, so we are the world. And all. No, 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 no. But that's the way teachers work. Uh, you, 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 you can't short cut that eh. You cannot shortcut that eh. May nagsasuggest dito, online games daw, turo mo. <laughs> Depende, huwag naman sugal ano, to teach math. <laughs> but you know, I mean, what I, what I mean is that you have to be the value, okay? You have to you have to show them, okay, that you know, you're not there for math, you're there for them, okay? Yeah, that's All right. Um, thank you, Paul. Okay, you stay safe in Iligan, okay? Hey, yeah, and that's, that's, ano, that's, uh, that's a really, really good insight. And to add in, uh, you know, yeah, math, diba? I think it. Uh, I think we should also remember as teachers, diba, is to connect, especially things like math, diba? Bakit tagi natin hinahanap yung X, e iniwan ka na nga, hinahanap, hanap mo pa rin. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, <laughs> it's totoo naman, diba? Okay. Kaya nga ako nag arts nung college kasi walang math, eh. So, pero, I think it's that's exactly it. People, kids don't understand bakit nila pinag-aaralan yung algebra, for instance. Mahirap na nga yung subject, hindi pa nila makikita yung value. Why are we adding letters? But if you change the way din naman kasi that, that you present it, yeah, and I think I said that nung episode one, di ba? Na, na when they understand what, that, what, the, what the value is and how it becomes part of it, even if you admit to them that it's difficult, then nawawala yung frustrations or nababawasan yung frustrations. And then you become the supportive teacher. Kasi ikaw mismo na nagsasabi, oo, oh, oh, mahirap to. And then you join them. Hindi ikaw yung typical math teacher. And remember, our, our, diba, yung, our math teachers from our nightmares were that. Yung, yung feeling nila, ang dali-dali-dali-dali ng subject. Abobo mo yung pag-abobo mo. Abobo mo, exactly. <laughs> but when they start to realize na, uy, tao din pala tong teacher na to. Yeah. And, and then tao din yung turing sa estudyante. Then it starts to, then the student starts to cope kasi hindi na uuna yung pag-reject niya. So, yes, diba? it goes back to you being there for your students, not not you being there for your lesson. And that's the difference between a teacher that works and a teacher that's, that's effective. Okay. Tama yan. And showing how practical it is to know, you know, just how much, you know, how much one plus one is. Because eventually in life, it's not only about the additions, but the subtractions and divisions, okay, which will matter, okay, in the value of your life, okay? Thank you, Mon. Okay, stay safe. Okay. Oh, my questions pa ba tayo? How much would you be able to save versus amount you given? Ano yun? Teka, naisim. Ah, si Fiel Javier was giving an example what, how math could be used na, using the allowance as, a, as an example. Tama, <laughs> as a real world example. 
how could you genuinely be a catalyst of positivity and acceptance in this new normal? Oh, well, ayan. Wow, philosophical question. Philosophical, okay. Ang tanong niya, as a basic ed teacher, how can you genuinely be a catalyst of positivity and acceptance in this new normal to our kids? Ah. I think I have a very simple answer to that. Um, these kids have to be better than us. Okay? You, you empower these kids to be better than the generations that came before them. You push them to be better. It's not merely being positive. It's being idealistic and to have concrete visions of a better world. Okay? How can you do that with basic? And it starts with basic education. It starts with basic education. If we have a better Philippines, it's not going to be the politicians who are going to change this country. You know who it is going to be? It's going to be the teachers. Okay? Because the teachers are given the care of the next generation. And that's your job to keep positivity in by giving not only a sense of hope, but then for fighting for a better Philippines. Yung ganun tipo. Or fighting for a better world. Okay? I'm not going to go into a nationalistic rah-rah-rah. No. Okay? <laughs> All I'm just saying is that's our job as teachers. To make sure that our kids are better than us. Okay. Uh, let's bring to the microphone now uh, Sir June Elioso. He has a question here. Sir June? Paramdam po kayo? Pakigalaw lang po ang baso. Hi, June. Good afternoon, um, I got interested in one of the things you mentioned a while ago regarding uh, uh, challenges on, in doing online classes. Uh, specifically, you mentioned the internet uh, connection. So I suddenly remembered one of the issues that uh, has been floating recently, uh, yung, uh, yung uh, no student left behind uh, the hashtag. You know? So uh, what do you do to make sure that your students are really uh, on board, all of them, during online sessions, especially during synchronous sessions? Well, to begin with, like I said, uh, ang policy ng school is not really to check the attendance. You know, you can check the attendance, but you don't take absences against the students because of the uh, because of the instability, okay, of uh, of the online set of, of the internet, you know, internet scene in our country. No, taga sa ang ah, you're from Subel, okay, you're here Apa. from Labang, okay. Oh yeah, the internet line is so bad here. Okay, I understand. Okay, I understand. Uh, I understand, June. You know, the, the point is that that's why now you record, okay? You record your sessions so they can always they can always look back to it, and you announce in in, in it, they know that all the all, all, all your lessons, all your lectures are recorded and uploaded, okay? In 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 in, in that in that quarter where they belong. Then another thing is you know you have to encourage them to interact with you, okay? Through email, okay? Through chats. You know, June, I had to open my own. No, I didn't, you know. Of course, I'm lying by saying that I opened a Zoom account, uh, uh, my own personal Zoom account, just for my classes because I do it also for my other work. I, I Zoom with my kids. Okay, if they need the question, if they have something, uh, they have a, they have a question. Okay, I tell them you 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 message me and then let's have a Zoom session. Then we discuss. It has happened a number of times, and usually, it's from kids na very problematic. Okay, not only in terms of internet, but then yung accessibility nila dahil lima sila sa bahay na naka online ngayon na nilapan sila kapag sabay sabay nagle lesson. That's why John, it's so much harder. <laughs> it's so much more work. But you just have to accommodate. You have to accommodate, and you have to be very flexible, and in 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 uh, in addressing particular needs of the students, okay? Now, as to how we can improve the internet, God knows, di ba? <laughs> God knows, okay. Thank okay. you, Pa. Salamat, Pa. Maraming salamat din, June. Thanks, June. Direct, we have one from Broden. Let's okay. pagbigyan natin si Broden. Pagbigyan okay, yes, natin. Broden. Paano <laughs> naman siya pagbibigyan, ano? Okay. Ako, ako, magtatanong. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Salamat yeah, yeah. naman, mayroon screen time pa ako. Screen yeah, time okay. ako sa ano ni Direct. Okay. Uh, no, because but it's also the question of others. 
Uh, distractions now. There's so ma so much distraction from, of course, my health problems. May mga may mga you have a you have a too too many things to do also because you're at home or or there's just so many things happening in, in the house. And some teachers are saying there's just too much distraction in their, the students in their lives. How the question is how do we integrate it? Is there a way to to make it to make distractions go away? Do we do that or do we do something about it? My answer, bro, then, is accept, advance. Okay, accept, <laughs> adapt, and advance. <laughs> you cannot remove the distractions, okay? You cannot remove the distractions. And the distractions can be something as something so trivial, like right in the middle of your session, Lala moves, it's outside with the delivery, okay? And that you have remember to... Direct, remember, direct, nag, ano ka, nag, uh, nag video ka yata noon, tapos tumahol yung aso or something like that? Or I know, I YouTube. know. I can't speak so loud because my neighbor is right outside, but they have this Pomeranian who is <laughs> a Pomeranian from hell, okay? Uh, I, was, uh, I was doing a voiceover for my PowerPoint and I was doing it take seven because oh, each time I would, you know, I say you cannot repeat. <laughs> you have to repeat everything each time this canine from hell would start yelping, okay? And my next door neighbor, ang bait bait nila. But they sell things and the dog yelps each time somebody buys anything. So I realized that the best time for me to, yes, yes, Christine, oh my God, the best time for me to record is at one in the morning. <laughs> okay. When the neighbor is asleep, nobody's buying anything from them and you know the dog is also asleep. But then the next time that I am pressured by that dog again, I, I have a very, very good solution, which of course I will not use, but I'll only joke, which is involves vetching. Okay, but then, <laughs> but then it's really, really difficult. That's one distraction, okay? Among the kids, undamming distraction then. Um, I'll be honest with you, uh, like last week, I mean, I had a kid whose dad died of COVID, okay? His da her dad died of COVID. So you have to, God, and then everybody was upset because those who knew her knew what she was going through, but there you come in, okay? There you come in and then be the human being that you are ad addressing these kids and telling them that you're there for them, okay? Uh, uh, accept and you have to adapt and dami natin problema and then you have to advance we can't be bogged down by our, our distractions and then you know there's nothing that we can personally do to change this this is a worldwide problem and you know what even depresses me is don't buy the latest issue of time magazine because it has articles which will further depress you about what <laughs> is to come okay so you know it's a matter of okay how, how am i gonna deal with it i'm gonna adapt and i'm gonna advance i'm gonna fight this i'm not gonna be a loser in this battle because if i become a loser then the kids will be a loser my family will be a loser and everybody i love will become a loser sure. okay. uh, you have to accept adapt sure. then advance and uh, laban lang laban lang okay i hope that answered your question which of course yeah, i did did did, did i'm sure yeah. okay okay right. uh there's one, okay, this one's actually very interesting, and I think this is a very real concern for many teachers mm -hmm. because I think teachers get it. That's the good thing. Teachers get that uh, they're at the front lines. They get it. School administrators, on the other hand, are a totally different animal. So her question is, how can we satisfy our bosses if we focus on the students instead of our lessons due to deliverables? <laughs> Jack, marami tayong administrators na kilala yes. ko dito. Wow. Sige nga, patingnan natin. Bato-bato <laughs> bato sa langit. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, sige. That was a very, this is a very valid question, di ba? How can they focus, how can they satisfy their bosses? This is satisfying academic, I would say, administrative requirements if they focus on the students instead of the lessons due to, due to deliverables. I'm quoting the, the question. So, I think, I it's, she's, I think they're worried about not hitting, not ticking the boxes because they're attending to the needs of the students rather than the academic I will answer framework. that. I'll, I'll answer that in three points then. Mm -hmm. Ang hirap ng tanong na yan, but I like the challenge, okay? <laughs> and I have to be very careful and politically correct in answering this because there are administrators perhaps from my school who are here, okay? Ay, wala, <laughs> na-check ko na. Director, director, both teacher and administrator actually. Yes, I am, okay? Number one, okay? <gasps> Teachers are there for the kids, not for the administrators. Whoa. <laughs> uh, 
and it, I'm not even talking about who pays the tuition fee and who we get our salary from. Okay, I'm talking about our, we don't have a profession, we have a vocation. Okay, uh, this is not something which we are going to make a lot of money out of. We're here because we love what we're doing and we love what we're doing because of the kids. Okay, number two, we are part of a system. Okay, but if you are effective as a teacher, how can you fail the administrators? Mm -hmm. True. Huh? If you're, if you're a good teacher, how can you possibly fail the administrators? The kids will deliver because they, 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 they love your relationships with you. And then lastly, there has to be all symbiotic. Maaring may mga administrators right now, hindi ba? Ang dami-dami mga expectations sa mga administrators and I try to understand them because of the pressure of the moment. Teachers, you don't know the kind of pressures administrators are facing right now because of this pandemic. Okay? Kahit kagat labi ako sometimes, hindi ba dyan, ganyan na lang ako. <laughs> I try to understand because these are such difficult times. If we are having difficulties, the more that the administrators have their difficulties because there are also bigger expectations from them. But in the long run, there should be no clashing relationship between administration, teacher, and students. They should be working as one. That's the whole principle. That's the whole pedagogy. That's the whole ideology of what your college or your school represents. Okay? So again, dapat walang conflict of interest yan. No? Kapag ibang expectation ng administration sa inyo na laban sa mga pangangailangan ng mga estudyante ninyo, aba, isip-isip. Di ba? Isip. Mm -hmm. Alright. Sige. I'll ask the last question. Last question because I'm moderating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so as we you know, diba, we we've already picked up amazing insight. And yes, you know, it's about the students. It's about the it's about teaching, not about the lesson, but it's about teaching something of value and all that. Direct. When is it too much pop, or when is pop too much? When do we get out of? When do we lose control? We lose control when the class becomes us. It's all about us and not about them. Oh, I've come across teachers who are like that. Okay, it's all about them being rock stars. Okay, mm. uh, God in college, I went through hell. Okay, with some teachers who are more concerned about their own personal needs rather than the needs of students. When it, you know, it, it, it's not interesting. Okay, when you have a teacher who spends 80% of his class talking about himself. Okay and not being able to relate it to the lives of the kids. I mean, who cares? I mean, they, you could only make them care if you could see what you're saying is also related to their present needs. Ay, lalo na ngayon, okay? Since we are in these critical times, they need the strength to, because if you think we're afraid, they're more afraid. They're much, much more afraid because we are already there at that certain point in our lives whom we know who we are, but they are about to enter a world in which they have to look for themselves in a world which has become a degree. So can you imagine the fear that's in them? We have to give them the strength. And it, it, it's interesting if we can share with them who we are because that will give them the strength. But if it's all going to be about one big, you know, megalomaniac, narcissistic ego trip, then it's not popifying, okay? It is actually atrophy. Okay, because it becomes an act of you know self-aggrandizement. Okay, wala nang ibang question. I love that one about the administration. That was so challenging. <laughs> okay, uh, Jag. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's another. That's great. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much, direct. Uh, Wow, if you could just keep this going on and on and on and on. Ganyan po kami, ladies and gentlemen, sa faculty room, pag nag na ang kwentuhan. Yeah, yeah. And parang ayaw na namin umalis para pag marang marang turo because the, 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 the way the discussion just goes around, it's just so amazing. Thanks so much, Direct, uh, for everything. For your questions, if you have more questions, please feel free to pop them and HiFi will get around to trying to answer that for you. Who's next on the script? <laughs> so Abby, 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 Abby will, uh, Abby will, we have uh, good news for everyone because yeah. direct, uh, Abby will explain. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you know what? Um, we could actually continue the conversation. We'll just end now officially, but for those who want to stay for, for more questions and more interaction with the master, we can. We can stay here and, and continue to do so. 
But just so we're mindful of those who need to leave by 5.30 because that's what we said in our, in our calendar invitation. So we will just have to end it. And we want to end it also by, by asking for feedback from everyone. So in the chat now, you have a feedback form. If you, they say, you know, feedback is gift. So good or bad, we, we acknowledge it as a gift to us because we want to improve the way we reach out to the teachers. So please fill out the feedback form when you can and then send it back to HiFi. When you fill it up, we will have an exchange gift. We will give you our certificate of participation <laughs> because I know, <laughs> I know it's important to us teachers. We know the love language of teachers, so we will give you that one. Um, also, we're recording. We recorded the session, so we will see it. Also, we will share it uh, maybe in two to three weeks, so you could actually share it to others and replay it. So if you wanna, if you wanna go back to the learnings. Thank you so much, Direct. Uh, you know what was yeah. my takeaway point? Is that the students are the agenda. They're the agenda, not us, not the subject. They are the agenda. Thank so I, I love that. I really love that. Bro, you have anything from your side? Uh, yeah, a uh, little bit more episodes of Live Ed, definitely. Uh, maybe sometime in October, uh, not this September, we'll have surprise masters for you. We're thinking about, you know, one of the things that you're preparing is like, now how do I look? Uh, if I have to video myself, how should I look? How do I how how do I make my videos better? It's not about uh, editing, but more of, you know, being present in the video. Those are the things that some teachers are already asking. We're not thinking anymore of how to do the how to go online or whatever. We know that. So what would be the next thing? So if you have uh, suggestions, you can also send yeah. us a, a email. But before we go, there's there are two things. We're making this look like. Direct is just going to dr drink water and go to his uh, dressing room for a while, but he'll come out again to ask for you to for him to answer questions or sign autographs online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but before we go to that like lobby, meeting him in the lobby and for for continuous questions, maybe until six o'clock for us because it's five five forty five. We'll just do one last picture taking by doing more pusu and round with Direct Joey himself. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we can, we'll cut him off and put them always in all that uh, screenshots. <laughs> oh, Stella Go okay. is here, my co-teacher. <laughs> okay, let's do the puso again. So uh, yeah, you can do the bigger one or the small one and we'll have the photo taken by some of our uh, team members. All right. Is that all right? So ready? Smile, please look at the camera. Turn on your cameras. Yeah. Sige pa. Uh, Lala, tell us whether it's okay already. <laughs> Last one. Oh, he's, he's, he's just All faking right. that sound. Stella Go is there. Hello, Stella. <laughs> Good, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Okay, uh, so we have that. Uh, we'd like, we thank you for all those who need to leave. Thank you for spending your Monday with us. We wish you the best or the great rest for the, uh, the great time for the rest of the week. But we'll ask also Jag again and jo uh, Derek, we have last 15 minutes for all of these things for the last ones so who are, are going to stay. No problem. All right. So, Jag? Yeah, okay. So, again, if you have questions, just pop them into the, into the chat. And, uh, you know, we'll continue. This is, I like what Broden said. Uh, ito yung inaambush nyo yung speaker sa lobby. <laughs> so, well, by, people are generally leaving. You're going to kind of stay a while and then ambush the speaker at the lobby. So, we're at the lobby. Time to ambush. <laughs> Okay. May mga questions ba dun kangina? Uh, let me see. That we missed, no? Well, yeah. While we're waiting, we want to thank Power Mac again yes. for hosting mm -hmm. this one with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks Power Mac Center. Mm -hmm. Yes, there, there you are. Please answer the evaluation questions huh? uh, that you have there and don't go. All right. We still have uh, about 60 people. Are, are in, so what are your questions? Uh, what, if you still have questions for direct, uh, that would be really great. Let's go ahead. Just ask your mm -hmm. questions. <laughs> they want you to drink water, Muna Siguro, Direk. <laughs> I drank now my water. I have it right here. Oh, you have it right. Okay, Direk, I have a question. Yeah. We're yeah. talking about pop, pop things or popifying things. Uh, you almost answered this question because it it was a similar similar. But my question is, how do you make people like you, like you, with all this? You know, things that you're doing also outside and you're a celebrity in many ways. How are you, how are you like adapting to this na, 
this is like a mundane task. This is not the high level celebrity task. And so in, in terms of like, uh, paano ginagawa ng celebrity itong something that all teachers are supposed to do like a human being, <laughs> like a normal human being. How do you do that? <laughs> No, because you know what, Broden, I've always wanted to be, a, you know, there's a whole story behind my life in show business and my life in education. Um, uh, Lita Kebenko was, uh, was privy to all this, okay? Um, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I'm happiest being a teacher. It just so happened that I, I, I love to write and then I ended up directing uh, and it Honestly speaking, it just equipped me with the enough resources for me to go back teaching because this is what I've always wanted. Uh, years ago, uh, years ago, um, I was given a choice by De La Salle to either continue my, 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 my career in show business or to finish my dissertation <laughs> because Brother Andrew wanted me to be the dean, I guess, okay, at that time, diba? Right? Then I said that if I had to stop for a year or two years to do my dissertation, I will not be able to go back to teaching. Uh, you know, go back to showbiz rather. So I opted to I opted to go full time in showbiz and get to give up teaching. But the moment I realized that I, I, I could already go back because I, I've done what I could have done for the movie industry, although I still want to, you know, do some more. I realized that when, when Lasan asked me to come over and uh, to teach, I said, this is where I belong. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, and I don't consider myself a celebrity. I think, you know, I think people in show business are so overrated. I mean, they're so yeah. overrated. I mean, people are, people are, you know, people are just so awed by two-dimensional figures. But since I know these people as, as flesh and blood, I'm not awed by them. I'm even more awed, okay, by a brilliant student who, 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 who does better than me, okay, who does better films than me. I mean, I think that is more awesome, right? Um, and this is not mundane. This is not mundane. It's, I, I, I think you have to appreciate life in utmost simplicity, okay? and knowing your core and your purpose. And that's why I, I, I have the highest respect for teachers because I know, that, um, I, I know that they're not in this for the money, okay? They're not in this. I, I, I know a lot of teachers who left teaching to, be, to, make, to make a lot of money. I, I, I go to my, my high school and college reunions and they keep telling me, you know, you could have been better if you went into, you know, business and all. But no, 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 it's not that. Because success is not fulfillment. And I'm so glad that at this point in my life, I am being fulfilled, okay? And it's the simplicity of fulfillment. And you know what, Broden? I really, really, really miss my students. Okay. Whoa, yes, face to face. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really, yeah. really miss them. Yeah, and I miss my faculty. I miss Jag and Rick Arevalo and the Madonna <laughs> and everybody. You know, I, 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 I miss everybody. Uh, because that's the joy, and that's what, Broden. I'm 65 years old. Okay, doesn't and look like. No, thank you, <laughs> no. thank you. And you know what keeps me young and alive, and why I'm still wearing this floral shirt is because I'm with kids. Okay, kids I'm with kids because kids keep you living. Okay, right. Yeah, it keeps you living, Broden. It's not mundane. I think this is uh, this is happiness. You know, somebody told me, no, who was that? Yeah, you know, one of my one of my close friends said, you know, don't you ever regret you don't have kids? I mean, you know, you make a great father. So I but I have forty kids. You know, every every three months, okay, and they go on forever. And, you know, and this is such a great job. This is such a great job. Okay. Speaking of kids, bro, uh, there's a question from Miss uh, Jim Tipai. Uh, is Jim? Do you wanna? Ask yeah. the question. Alika, ask me, ask me. Okay. Jim. Good afternoon. Hey, Hi. <laughs> thank you. Direct, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, because nothing was mentioned about uh, the kids earlier, but now I'm thankful that you mentioned about kids. Because um, I just would like to, to hear from you. How do you see the Popify approach uh, when it comes to our preschool teachers this time? Because they are really dealing with very small kids 
with very limited attention span. At times, five minutes is really long. So <laughs> how do you keep them? And, and, you know, I can see the struggle of our preschool teachers, you know, keeping the kids, especially that, uh, but uh, it, it's something to, to deal with because of the nature of the kids. So, yeah, just want to hear you, from the you know, of you know what, Jim? Uh, the work of the preschool teacher is harder than the work of a college professor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's not only a question of the lesson and the attention time, but you are dealing at the most critical formative years of a kid. Okay, you you, you really are dealing with you know para bang mga kung kung itlog yan, hindi pa hard yung shell, so you have to really teach them with care. At sa kayo kaguluhan ng bata, yung pagiging batibot ng bata, yung restlessness ng bata, it's because they're kids. Okay, it's because that's part of it. Okay, that's part of their nature, and that's when the teacher has to understand the gulo and not use discipline, okay, in order to, to, to give form and to give something definitive, okay, to these kids. How do you make, how do you popify? By understanding, these kids need the kind of pampering and assurance, okay, na, na kailangan ng, you know, which they get from home, hindi ba? And this is when they develop social interaction and this is the first, these are the first phases when they deal with the idea of authority. That's why it's so critical that they are friends and they show compassion, love, and empathy. Okay? Mahirap bang gawin yun? Oh my God, Jim, Jim, just ko. <laughs> just ko. I would rather teach in a military school than to teach, okay, preschool. Hindi ba? It's, it, it's that critical. Now, how do you popify it? There's one simple reason. Be compassion, empathy, understanding. Be human. Okay, be human. Okay? Uh, these kids are... Totoo ang attention pa niya ngayon, lalo na ngayon. I mean, Jim, you know what, what, what terrifies me is kids na of that age already holding cell phones and, and gadgets, hindi ba? Yeah. Jesus Christ, yung perception ng world nila has been digitized, hindi ba? Everything is it, it's punched down. And that's when the teacher comes in to make sure that human contact is cherished and nurtured. Nice. Thank you so much, Derek. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh, no. Yeah. Jag, sige, Sorry. go ahead, Jag. No, no, there's, this is really interesting. Can I call on uh, Justin Sukgang? Okay. There's this uh, very interesting question here about being a law teacher. Yeah. This is now Stump the Master. From, <laughs> no, from preschool to law school. From preschool to law school. Okay, hold on, yeah. I'm just going to turn on my ring light. Kasi hold on, muna, uh, Justin. Ha? Na, lang na. Na. Alam, alam ng direct pagkulang ng lighting. Galing. <laughs> I just have to turn on my ring light. <laughs> wow, Justin, are you in uh, which library is this one? Uh, this is library. Yeah, it's a library from uh, Michigan Law School. Michigan oh. Law School. It's a good library. So I use it for my virtual. Oh, it's very pretty. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Parang boring yung libro, pero... it, it, it looks like a church. <laughs> I thought it was a church. Actually, it looks like a church, Justin. <laughs> okay. okay, yes, okay. Justin. I'll ask your so, question. Hi, Derek. Good afternoon po and thank you for this opportunity. So, uh, you know that in law school, uh, uh, traditionally we're expected to be rigorous or at least appear to be one. So, our students are expected to be mature, unlike in the basic ed na, di ba, immature, so aakayin talaga natin. But my concern here is, despite those despite those expectations, and I know I, I'm an ed educator at heart, uh, how are we going to balance those expectations uh, of who a lawyer is or who a law professor is and what the subject matter is with that of the expectations of an educator? In other words, paano yung sobrang rigorous pero dapat light or rigorous and uh, empathetic or uh, all, of, all of those extremes, how are we going to balance that? those things and i also watch k-pop uh, korean novella not <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i love i really love uh what do you call it sky castle sky castle, castle. I, I love i love that series but uh, uh paano ba na organic kasi kanina i picked it up na of course you just don't put that uh in your topic and then students will definitely know now you're pretending Paano po magigi organic? How practical tips? Kasi lawyers were not... Siguro kasi kung if you're an artist, madali yan na 
we don't appear to be like that eh. Pero kung lawyer ka, tapos pre- medyo makikita lang ganang estudyante na pretensyoso. Parang lawyers are not human. Parang ganun ba yun? <laughs> Unfortunately. Or fortunately. No, no nakakasad. Because when I, talk, when I think of law school, I think of an old movie called The Paper Chase. Okay? Yes, With John yes. Houseman. Okay? And, and that's yung, the way it is pa rin po direct. You see, but you see, Justin, there is a world of difference between you in front of your students and you outside the classroom. Mm-hmm. Now, are you going to limit, okay, the amount of learning only with the opportunities of your synchronous sessions or your, you know, of, of the fact that you're, you're, you're there, okay, teaching the law? Because the law, law is precise like medicine, okay? Yes. Like, like, you know, it is almost, it, it is precise because it's down, down, down to the letter. But, okay, it makes a world of difference when they see you as a teacher and see you as a human teacher, okay? You get what I mean? You yeah, get yeah, what yeah. I mean? That there is a law, but at the same time, the law is for men and therefore the law is for the compassion of men, okay? So, you can be rigid, you can be strict, but then your strictness is justified, Okay, because there is an end result which is needed. But it does not necessarily mean that you are going to be inhuman. Di ba? Um, siguro sa loob ng classroom, pwedeng strict to kayo. You know, you know, parang ako yan, nung ako'y nasa Pinoy Dream Academy, that everybody thought that I was the devil incarnate. Di ba? Because I was the personification of Katarayan. And only because I was working on instructions that I have to be Simon yeah, Cowell. Yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah. But then the people in the Apinoy Dream Academy know that, you know, that's me in front of the class. But then when you go out and talk to me in person, I'm not that. I'm a, I'm, I'm a person who will go out of your way to understand you. Now, about Sky Castle. Ang ganda niya ng Sky Castle. How do you put it? Or, of course, naman, you know, you just can't, in the middle of a, of a discussion of law, you just can't talk about Sky Castle. But then, how nice it is. How many of your kids are actually within the situation of Sky Castle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many of those law students are with, you know, with tiger moms, okay, and tiger dads, okay, mm-hmm. twisting their arms, okay, to finish law? I mean, that, that, that's, that's one way, of, that, that's one way of, of reaching out to them to say, you know, hey, guys, I understand what you're going through. I was there too. Pinagdaanan mo rin yan, Justin. Mm-hmm. Yes. Importante yes. ipakita mo sa kanila na naiintindihan ko kung asan kayo kasi pinagdaanan ko rin yan at kaya ako nandito hindi para maghigante. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hindi ba maghiganti sa mga teacher yeah, yeah. mo? Nandito ako to be better for them. To be better for them. Okay? Um, I hope I made sense. No, I hope I made sense. That's a pretty challenging question but there are certain courses talaga which really require precision. Law, medicine, engineering. Math. Hindi ba? You know, how do you show compassion in engineering? Simple, hindi ba? An engineer works on something which is for man, blah, 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 etc., etc. You can look at it in a very holistic way. You can look at it even in a noble way, in a very desiderata way. But the thing of it is it all boils down to being a human being. Okay? And I love, I love your background. I love your background. Thank you. Salamat. Okay. Maraming salamat. Uh, yeah. Wow. Galing. Pero tama, yes. Be human. Let's not forget that. Uh, I guess, well, it's 6 o'clock. Um nagkaklang klang na yung Angelos if you happen to teach in a Catholic school. So, with that, we're gonna close this uh, little, ano, um, dumating na yung mga bodyguard ni Direk, i- 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 ano, i- usher out na siya, and then i-announce na namin na Elvis has left the building. <laughs> and, uh, but we thank everyone uh, for joining yeah. us here this afternoon, thank Direk. You, thanks so much for everything, uh, even the extra few minutes of your time afterwards. Uh, again, feedback, uh, meron pong feedback, and um, can I just say a final said, word to, to, to the oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yes, yes, please go. Oh, go. Yes, yes, yes. You know what? To all the guys here, God, do you know how lucky you are? Do you know how lucky you are because the good Lord has chosen you to be in this profession? Mm. Do you know how much change you can make in this world? Uh, we are the most underappreciated profession in the world. Mm. We're not gonna let that get to us because what is important is we were we're here for a purpose. And God, the very fact that you're still here at this day and age, still teaching and still with a, with a fire to get to, to 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 learn more, to be better teachers, I think you are really blessed. You mm. are you are all special because yeah. we are all special because we're teachers. That's Amen. Agree. <laughs> agree. Agree. Close one, Abby. Galeng. Galeng. I no, I mean that is a that is a major pain because I, 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 a lot of people say those who who can't do 
teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it hurts so much, and then now I feel like How now long? you the the, the uh, word. I think maybe our next session will be our next episode will somewhere be along this line. <laughs> Sabi, oh, marami nga nagtatanong, marami nagtatanong sa mga those who work in the corporation. How do you teach now? <laughs> How do you teach? Because they have to teach the same way online then to train their people and stuff. So, talagang they go back to the to the teachers now. Paano nyo ginagawa yan? So, marami nang bumabalik sa school ngayon, learning, learning how how to do it in the corporation. Okay. Abby. Yeah, so thank you so much, Direct Joey. I mean, you are such a, a force in terms of uh, <laughs> inspiring and uh, how do you say this one? Empowering everyone, activating everyone. So I am super activated. <laughs> so thank you, Direct. Direct. Thank you so much, too. So, thank yeah. you for this opportunity. Thank you. And maraming salamat. I know there are a lot of a lot of our in the audience have been with us in episode one. I know Cyril has been with us since episode one. So thank you so much for, for May following. Hint again. May hint tayo, Abby. Abby, huh? about this one. You know how we did it? Because the teachers can use this. Uh, remember when we have students, we ask them to just put their questions on the chat and it becomes like, parang we'll ask them to answer later. But you notice in this, in this episode, we actually put in the question, the one who's asking a question, making it more personal. Yeah. You can do this. You can do this in a Zoom meeting, in your Google Meet mm -hmm. meeting. Bring them out. Bring them out so it becomes more and more personal. This is, we're doing this to give you an example of how you can also do your, uh, your classes this way. Okay. We're, we're like mimicking a, a classroom experience. And at the end of the day, it's really a conversation. Um, you do not lose empathy because you can still converse. I realized during this whole pandemic, I've been able to have more conversations with people, more mindful conversations with people than when I was not. You know, I was in an office and running around with headless chicken in meetings. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. We hope you will have a very productive week. We know it's the start of class for, for most of the teachers in, in basic education. So we wish you all the best. We're here. Please drop us a line. If you have feedback or any recommendations on what to take up next, we'll be very happy to look at it and, and be hopefully be able to provide it to you. So all the best. Godspeed to everyone. Thank you, Direct. Bye. Thank, you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Hi, guys. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Bye. Brother, Thank you so yes. much. Thank you, June. Good to see you, you again.